In an official statement, the Internal Revenue Service announced that it has shut down an online service to obtain tax records after determining that unusual activity had taken place on the application, which indicates that unauthorized third parties had access to some accounts on the transcript application. An initial review of that activity was revealed access gained to more than 100,000 accounts through the Get Transcript application. After the IRS disclosed more information, it became clear the user data was not obtained because of a direct hack of government systems, rather weak authentication used by the IRS to protect access to taxpayer data is likely at fault. The attackers were able to acquire taxpayer records using stolen personal identifying information possibly pulled from online financial fraud marketplaces. The Get Transcript application, a feature of the IRS's site that allows taxpayers to download tax return and tax payment transaction data, was apparently targeted by financial fraudsters between February and mid-May. If you're interested in helping kids in the foster care system, CASA is having a yearly training session soon. CASA is a court-appointed special advocate. They are volunteers who go through an intense 36-hour training to learn how to look out for the best interest of the child in court. So what kind of requirements do they have to have? They have to be inquisitive. They have to have compassion. They have to um, have a computer, because we do all of our court reports on computer. Um, they have to understand that they can't get too involved with an individual case because then it takes away their ob ob objectivity. So if they uh, come on board, they're able to handle a case, they're able to do the investigation that requires, um, and then uh, speak on behalf of the child. Now sometimes what children want is not necessarily what's best for them. You know, a small child may um, want to stay with their parents, even though the parents are not good parents. And so it's up to the CASA to be able to determine, really, the best place for that child. So after the training period, what kind of hours are you looking for as required uh, to be at CASA? You know, each case varies. Uh, you may have a case where you need to do a lot of uh, care and a lot of investigation and a lot of meeting with people because you meet with the foster parents, you meet with the uh, school teachers, you may meet with the child's doctor or the psychiatrist. You have to attend a certain amount of meetings and you're supposed to see the child at least once a month. But this is not big brothers, big sisters. Casas are not babysitters. Mm -hmm. They're there to determine the best interest of this child that's in foster care. And you know, we still have roughly 75 children in Pahrump in foster care right now. How can people get involved? Call us, 775-513-9514. And once again, that's June 9th, so you need to get in touch with you right away. Right away. Last week, a National Nuclear Security Administration's lead team successfully conducted the fourth in a series of experiments designed to improve their ability to detect underground nuclear explosions. The source physics experiment is a fundamental step forward in the United States' effort to improve arms control verification and will eventually be used to assure compliance with the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. You can follow this news on the NNSA blog, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and YouTube. Let's join Alicia Cook with your entertainment this week. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Homicide Section is not at this time conducting an investigation into the death of legendary blues musician B.B. King. The Clark County Coroner said in a news release that it is coordinating investigative efforts with the Las Vegas Metro Police Department. They said at this point they do not have any evidence that the family's allegations of foul play can be substantiated. However, they are taking them very seriously and will be conducting a thorough investigation. They are coordinating their investigative efforts with the Homicide Division and they expect the investigation will take a minimum of six to eight weeks. B.B. King's heirs, who've been most outspoken about the blues legend's final days, are accusing King's two closest aides of poisoning him. King's daughters, Karen Williams and Patty King, 
alleged that King's business manager, Laverne Tony, and his personal assistant, Marion Johnson, killed their father. The coroner's office conducted an autopsy of King's body Sunday and returned it to the mortuary the same day. Actress Maggie Gyllenhaal has said that she was turned down for a part because of her age. She said that because she is 37 years old, she was turned down for a part recently because she was too old to play the lover of a man who was 55. The star said it was astonishing. It made her feel bad, then angry. Then it made her laugh. But many in Hollywood aren't laughing. Actresses have long complained that they stop being offered leading roles by the time they turn 40, and aging male stars are often paired with female love interests young enough to be their daughters. Comedy great Anne Mira, the quick-witted half of the comedy team Stiller and Mira, died at 85 years old on Saturday. Mira and her husband Jerry Stiller were married for 61 years and worked together almost as long. In addition to her husband, she is survived by her children, comic actor Ben Stiller, daughter Amy Stiller, and grandchildren. Anne's memory lives on in the hearts of daughter Amy, son Ben, her grandchildren, her extended family and friends, and the millions she entertained as an actress, writer, and comedian. The couple made their name as Stiller and Mira in the 1960s with frequent performances on variety shows, including The Ed Sullivan Show. I am Alicia Cook with your entertainment this week. Thanks, Alicia. Here's this week's update with RJ Lloyd, Darby O'Donnell, and Joe Hayden at Fitness for 10 and Peak Performance. Sometimes you are kind of like, why did you think of this? <laughs> Who would have thought of sitting on the floor and putting a weight behind their knee and lifting their leg awkwardly? But no, they actually are real exercises that he's definitely perfected and he knows exactly what they're supposed to be targeting. I noticed that you also um, kind of confided in RJ about any uh, you know, issues that you have with eating, with exercise, any other things that you need to talk to him about. He's kind of become your buddy, huh? Well, yeah, I mean, he, he is there to just help me lose weight, but there is emotional things, and he has to know me on a personal level in order to help me. Yeah. And so what did you think about Amy? Can you tell Amy what, um, how uh, you were impressed with uh, what she's doing? Oh, no, I'm super impressed with Amy. And it means a lot that she would want to do that because of just watching me do that. So that's, like, super inspiring just for me. Um, and she's doing really well. And it's true. Like, if she could do that, then what's your excuse? <laughs> she's doing excellent. Down 22.7 pounds. Wow. Lost four pounds this week. Um, she's doing a great job. Our workouts are coming great. I think she's, she's following her program still, you know, with, uh, with the fact of cutting the carbs. I'm a big thing about cutting carbs at night um, and keeping your protein intake. So you can have protein throughout the day, up your meal intake to about six meals a day. Um, and around six, seven o'clock, depending on your, what time of bedtime you have, cut your carbs out. That way um, it, doesn't, it doesn't sit overnight and it's, it's burned throughout the day. A heavier carb load during the day. Um, cut that back around lunchtime and then just progressively have none during the day and just keep a protein intake. Let's talk a little bit about alternatives uh, for changing your diet because you were talking about cutting out the carbs during the day. How can a person get on a program that's going to work for them? Well, you know, everybody, everybody's body type is different. Um, you find what niche works for you and, and try to work with it. But the rule of thumb is I just try to cut the carbs down. Um, I try to see, at first I want to see where you're eating. And if you train with, you sign on with a personal trainer, with one of us, um, we, I get a full log, see what you're eating, see, see what kind of stuff you're eating, frequency you're eating, times a day, what's going in, things of that nature. Um, and then from that point on, we try to move things around, not totally overturn your lifestyle the way you're eating, because let's face it, you know, if you're, gonna, if you're a healthy eater, you're going to stay healthy, eat healthy. If you're, if you're eating bad, then we try to modify that, so that way it's cutting back a little bit, so you're eating a little more healthier stuff and easier for a lifestyle change. When we return, we'll have your weather and an announcement about the legislature you might want to get a pen out for. News 46 weather is brought to you by 
to your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. Hello and welcome back to News 46. Today is Wednesday, May 27th. Today we had sunny skies with a high of 90 degrees. Your average temperature around this time of year is 93 degrees. Winds were coming from the south-southwest today at 7 miles per hour with gusts up to 12 miles per hour. The EV index today was 9, which is very high. Humidity was at 13% today. Sunrise was at 531 this morning, and the record high back in 1974 was 108 degrees. Well, tonight we'll have mostly clear skies with a low of 63 degrees. Your average temperature around this time of year is 69 degrees. Winds will be coming from the east-northeast this evening at 5 miles per hour with gusts up to 15 miles per hour. Humidity will be at 24 percent. Sunset will be around 752 this evening, and the record low back in 1980 was 50 degrees. Tomorrow we'll have sunny skies with a high of 95 degrees and a low of 66 degrees. Winds will be coming from the south-southwest at 6 miles per hour with gusts up to 10 miles per hour. Humidity will be at 16 percent. Sunrise will be at 531 tomorrow morning, and the UV index will be 9, which is very high. For our 7-day forecast, we'll have a mostly sunny week with a few extra clouds this Saturday. Also, we'll be looking at some high winds early next week. Your high temperatures will be starting off in the mid-90s. That'll be going all the way up to 101 degrees this Saturday and Sunday. That'll be working its way back down into those low 90s, though, mid-next week. Your low temperatures will be looking at a similar pattern starting off in the mid-60s. That'll be going up, hitting 69 degrees this Friday and Saturday, and then working its way back down into those low 60s early next week. Thanks, Noah. The final conference call for the 78th regular session of the legislature will be held tomorrow. Please join Senator Pete Gorkachia, Assemblyman James Ellison, and James Oscarson in their conference call at 3.30 p.m. To join, you can dial 866-949-6798. That's 866-949-6798. Enter the conference ID 9995-146. That's 9995-146, and then press pound. If you have any questions, I'm going to give you another number, 775-684-1447. That's 775-684-1447. And if you missed all that, just give me a call here at the station. You know the number, 727-9400. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of News 46 from everyone up here at KPBM-TV. And, of course, on the radio, 95.9 KA's Country. Have a great night. We'll see you back here tomorrow.